I want to see mother. I want to see dad. I want to see every look one that I have. My brothers and sisters, oh, I want to see them all. Let's all pray together. Father, we love you tonight. We are thankful to be gathered in your name. How good it is, oh God. Bless us tonight, we pray. The church is everywhere. We're men together in your name. Amen. Whatever name they're called by, you bless them all tonight, oh God. Hallelujah. Bless your people everywhere, for we need your blessing in this day and time that we live in. We know we're in troubled times, oh God, but we're thankful we have a Savior. Amen. It can't be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. Touch us tonight, oh God, and lift us up. Open our hearts to the Word of God. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, girls. Is there a little singing? Come on, read some singing. By yourself tonight? Yeah. I want to be at it. Yeah, we're expecting you to come out of your cocoon this you, you make that declaration that she's going to come out of your cocoon, so we're looking for you to look lively and get rid of it. A few more days. Uh oh. <laughs> That's not good. It's time to blue and green. I'm, 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 like, I'm like, butterfly, it doesn't come out. She's been so shy, she wouldn't really do this, but she, she told us way back in the first of the year uh, when we had her watch service. Uh, this year I'm going to come out of the closet. I'm going to go out there. I remember that. I remember that. I do too, yeah. I'm, and we're gonna we're gonna make her count for it, too. Oh we love you, baby. Come on. Yeah. Um, do it your way, baby. Praise the Lord. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Uh, page one thirteen, Lori's Tuesday, Q D.
Yeah. 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 They would never know. Uh, 156, I'm determined to hold out key of A. Thank you. 
Did you know that? He knows how to take care of those kind of counts. Amen. Praise the Lord. Whosoever will, let him come and take in the waters of life freely. Hallelujah. Ask it, you shall receive it. Amen. it shall be open. Hey. Then you good enough. Thank you, Lord. We're going to take our prayer request at this time. Please remember uh, Barb Ferguson and the cure up. She's out in intensive care. And very, very critical. So please remember her and lift her up. If you don't, some of my people call her Barb Martin, which I always call her Barb Martin. But anyway, whether it's Martin or Ferguson, I don't, I'm not really sure, but she went by Martin for years. So anyway, please remember her and lift her up. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Peggy a little while ago. Uh, she is doing better. She's eating a little. She's drinking a little. They took her oxygen on, and tomorrow they're supposed to move her to a different room upstairs. Amen. Amen. I know when you called yesterday, she was very, very critical. Yes, she was. God bless her. Amen. Remember her. Brother Dennis. I want to pray for everybody out there on the street and everybody around town and anyone that's running past. My feet, Father. Be pray for my feet, but Father. My stomach, Father. Well, my time. Amen. Let's remember that. Uh, Sister Caroline. <laughs> Wasn't that good? Tremendous. Amen. Tremendous. Amen. She did a wonderful job. Wonderful this job morning. this morning. Yes, she did. Brother David did too. Brother, Brother David. Yes, David. It was all good to die. We have two Davids. <laughs> Battling with shingles. That's so hard. So. Oh, Jesus. That one's gone. That one's gone. Praise God. Amen. Jesus, God. Amen. They say that it's very, very painful. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I know my mom that. and Brother Pat's mom both yeah. had shingles. And Sister uh, Betty uh, used to, uh, my brain just went blind. A senior woman. I've got a lot of them like this. <laughs> Sister Betty used to come to our church, but I had a little church pastor. Sister Betty. I do think one of my husband left no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to all the steal the car. Savage? Savage or Savage? Sister Savage. Sister Savage, yeah. Hey, he's he, he, not the winner. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. George rescued me, didn't she? Good Lord, I did his funeral for a long time. She had shingles real bad. Yeah. I always walked up to you and said, your mom, my mom. <laughs> it's, Sorry, it's a painful time. George, I want, I want you. <laughs> just a friendly reminder to remind everybody to vote and pray that yes. no, it's very important it's, I know we don't do politics in the church no. but I just really feel that we need to, as Christians, we need to come together yes. and do our voting this year so I, I heard the most wonderful right message this morning on, uh, on TV James Merritt was, uh, was teaching while well, I was getting every Sunday school and he was teaching about praying for your leadership and he said, well, do you agree with him? You don't agree with him? God, God commands us to pray for our leaders. And he said, now, they're, they're not going to be responsible for what they do. But we're going to be responsible if we don't hold them up in prayer. And I do believe that. And I, I believe that something, something happens when the people of God pray. And he was talking about the fact that we had never been attacked here as far as uh, 
bombs dropped on us and, uh, over through the years. And she said, you think that's an accident? It's not. God, it's God's provision. He took care of us because we've always acknowledged in Him. And more than anything, we need to acknowledge Him in our prayers for those who have a world over us. Amen. Please, please uh, exercise your right. Amen. That would do both this year. She was really a hateful individual. This, yeah, this and I remember what time you had with her, but you just loved her and just went right over. So I, I thank the Lord that he's answering prayer there. Um, I go and ride with this lady on Tuesday on her bus route. She, she, um, she's been having some trouble with her students on the bus. And the Bible says where well, there's one that can chase 10,000 and uh, two can chase the more than that. So we're going we're gonna to go and pray over her bus and over our children. Our youth is in a very terrible, terrible situation yeah. right now. They need our prayer. Yes, so, yeah. uh, so just pray that uh, uh, the Lord have his way that we can be a witness. Uh, she drives from uh, Brooklyn. She met from Brooklyn School. And uh, she called me in. I'm really excited about doing this. Uh, I'm excited for what God's doing in my life. Can you do it? Hallelujah. Brother Harvey. You went to Sunday school for a minute, huh? Yeah. So, confession's good for that, all right? Sister Martha. Sister Martha. All right. It's amazing how they kind of drift away, isn't it? And then they get in trouble and they kind of come back. <laughs> you, you used to have that candy bag. Anyway, just sit them up in their family. It's a little act, really. It's really burdened for her family. Amen. Amen. Sister uh, Caroline. She's supposed to go in the morning and have um, possibly stints put. They want to put her in the hospital Friday. Friday? And Where are you doing that at, Sue? You made yourself. You made yourself. But anyway, they uh, wanted to put her in, but she said, I haven't even talked to my children about this yet. So anyway, she just said, they're going to, she has to be here at 6 o'clock in the morning. So please remember her and lift her up before the Lord. Get her done. We know God is able to sure. keep his hand upon her. You know, we sure just, is. amen. You can make it easy for you. Brother Mark. Uh, Yeah. Amen. Yes, I do. Well, I know. Hallelujah. I know. I, uh, he has preached for us. I've done a lot of programming and things with, the, with, with uh, Bruce through the years and uh, sing out the fair when he's speaking out there. Yeah, and I, li I like Bruce. I always did. <laughs> you know, and, uh, I, I, pray that, I pray that everything's fine. Sister? <coughs> God bless Long him. Cancer. God bless him. Man. Amen. Lord, Just Jesus. remember that. Yeah, Sister Erlene. Jesus. 
Please remember Sister Marie. She's not here tonight. She called me just crying. She'd gotten her partial, what, last Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday? And they, I told you that, she, that when they pulled her teeth, that they broke her jaw. But she's been in so much pain and she's been trying to get through it and stuff. And so she got home from Sunday school and she was hurting really bad, so she took half of a, a pain pill, took her, her partial out, laid it on her desk. The dog got it. 
Jesus. Ate one of the teeth out. The main one out. Of it. She was just crying. I bet. She was, she was just she was just squalling. She said, I cannot believe this, Mom. She said, Here I am, I'm in so much pain. And it took me two hours to find where he hid the blade at, and then one of the teeth was gone. And she she was just in misery. But anyway, please remember her and lift her up for the Lord. Remember Sister Lisa. She's working again this evening. And I said it seemed like she <laughs> works all the time, but just remember her. It's not really what she wants to be doing. She really <laughs> is hoping to get another job. So, you know, but we have to do whatever we have to do. Sister Carolyn. Um, I'd like the church to um, Sister Lisa Jane Jones. She's been in the and also one of my nurses is a nurse. Dennis, we have seasons. I know you want to say that. It'll, it'll change. Just Dennis, if you want to stay warm, you're going to all the time. You're going to have to go somewhere. Right. Get you stay warm. Get you some just long johns and put your big clothes on. I have to love this season. I do too. Amen. I spoke request by the uplift man. Amen. Pray for Zach that he gets some to feeling like he's not so tired after cleaning the church yesterday. Let's put it that. <laughs> That's what he said. He said this morning he couldn't make sense go because he was tired from cleaning yeah. the church. He's been in church quite a bit, though, really, you know. I know, yeah. God bless you. Praise the Lord. We love you. Hallelujah. Let's all pray together. Look to Mighty the Lord. Savers, God is so good to serve you tonight, Father. Thank you for the peace and the joy that we have in serving you, Lord. God, you're real and your word is true. We stand upon it tonight. Every name calling this building tonight and every need made known before the people. We live at the throne of grace and we trust and believe in the sea. Your hand in the land of the living, oh God. Heal and deliver. Hallelujah. As only you can. Work out the affairs in men's lives. And every one of these requests that went for, Lord, there's so much going on in the world today. And but we know that you're still in control. Hallelujah. We give it all to you, Father. Help us to do what we can do. Amen. And we know what you can do. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, for our little church here, for the spirit we have and we enjoy together. Thank you for the peace of God and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Bind us together with cords of love, O oh God. And help us to love and be mindful of one another. Amen. And to pray for one another. And all these things that needs prayed about, we give them to you. Pray a special prayer for Brother Zach tonight. Oh God, you give him strength, Lord. Hallelujah. Touch him, Lord. God, we'll thank you for it. And give him the praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Well, Sister Carolyn's going to uh, sing a chorus tonight. And she's going to use the CD this time. Oh, well, this is big. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender.
You know what? We only come in church two or three hours a week, Brother Pat. And we do more out in the world than what we do in the church. When I come in here, I just want to be ready to praise Him. And give Him my full attention when I come in here. And you know what? I couldn't praise Him enough, Brother David. I couldn't. He's been so good to me that, oh, I just can't tell it all. And Zach, he is such a blessing to us. He's so tired because I offered to come and help him with the church and he didn't want my help. I bet he don't decline it next time. <laughs> so we're going to sing this song, God is God. Uh, you want to stand up and shout with me? If you don't, I'll shout without you. <laughs>
Thank you, Jesus. Anybody has a need right now, the Lord is present to heal right now. Hallelujah. Just let him have his way with the glory to God. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Liberty. Have Jesus. And silver, Lord, Lord. I've got to
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just feel like somebody needs to come. You know, you don't need an invitation, Oliver. We give invitations sometimes, but you know, if you feel the need, that's the time to come to the Lord. That's what the elders all about. You can bring your burden to the Lord and lay it down. Hallelujah. Go away feeling much better than you did when you come. Hallelujah. It'll set you free. That's the Lord. There is refreshing in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In fact, he said, For with stabbing lips and another tongue, I will speak of this people, and this is the rest, and this is the refreshing, saith the Lord. But he said, Yet for all this they would not hear. So, but some will hear. Some will hear. This is the rest. Wherewith I will cause the weary to rest. There is rest. He said, There remains a rest for the children of God. Amen. We don't have to wait until we get to heaven to get rested. We get rested right here. Thank you, Jesus. It's just a taste of what it's going to be. I, my, my, can you imagine what it's going to be? It's going to be worth every trial, shall we? Every test, every problem, every trouble. Praise the Lord. Sister Jennifer read it to us this morning how the, that he would give us this thing, but however, because of the flesh and because we're in this body, we suffer persecution, we suffer things along with it, you know. But the rest is there. Amen. But in that day we'll be changed in a moment in the twinkle of an eye. Amen. And we'll, we'll, we'll not have all that to, to worry about. We'll be like God. We'll understand the mysteries of God. All the mysteries of God will be opened up. I was sitting here talking about this world ago to one of the brothers up here. Just think about it. I said, when, 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 we, when we get our change, you know, you know be like, we'll be like the Lord. We'll understand all the mysteries of life, all the things that has uh, bothered us for years and years. Why are they deformed babies? Why is this this? Why is it that? They never did anything. To, and we don't understand it. It's beyond our understanding. A lot of things in life, why did I have to go through this? Why am I going through what I'm going through right now? Even if someday we'll look at it and say, oh, I see it all now. I see it all now. It's all, there it is. It's just plain as day. It'll open up to us and we'll understand it. in all the mysteries of life. Thank you, Jesus. God is good tonight. I praise Him for He's good. Even if it's for the young, it's for the old, it's for whosoever will. Let Him come and take of the waters of life freely. Praise the Lord. Some people are, are, get scared of when the Holy Ghost begins to fall. But you don't need to get scared. He won't bother anybody. Don't want to be bothered. I tell you that. You're not bothering you. You're not bothering you. No, but you yield just a little bit, and you'll move in. <laughs> he'll move in. You just get a little bit of love and he'll move in. Hallelujah. Might make you understand some of the mysteries of life. Hallelujah. <laughs> If you will receive it, if you will receive it, this is that which is spoken of by the prophet Joel. In the last days, said the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you'll receive it, this is that. Amen. This is that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I heard old sister say one time, if that ain't this and this ain't that, I don't know what this is, but this ain't that. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's real tonight. And the Lord is speaking, if you can just hear his voice. If you just listen, you'll hear his voice. He's speaking, he said, I will speak to this people. Hallelujah. I praise him. Amen. Halakabadi and the Loko I'm just going to read a few scriptures for you. Amen. I feel like it's kind of been done here tonight. And sometimes that's the way it is. I promise you, I won't keep you on. I do want to read some few scriptures to you. Thank you, Jesus. And just let him just go on and enjoy the world. That's okay. <laughs> the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. I I remember, I remember a young, uh, lonely lad that just never quite fit in with this world. <laughs> I never did really quite fit in. 
I remember the loneliness. Oh, I hated Sundays so bad. I did. I, I went to Sunday school and stuff, but I, I just hated Sundays. Because there wasn't nothing on the radio. Now, back in our day, back, back in the old, old days, <laughs> all you heard on the radio was, was gospel music. Oh, you didn't hear no country music on the, no rock and roll on Sunday. No, no, all day it was gospel. And as you turn on the radio, you're going to hear gospel or somebody singing or somebody preaching or something. Oh, to see those days again. <laughs> but of course, the world gets bolder and bolder through the years and begin to take, take control of those kind of things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But I praise Him for those things. I remember those times. They were good times. We didn't lock our doors. We didn't even lock our doors. There was hobos, and we, we lived right by the railroad tracks. <laughs> and uh, there was a hobo jungle right across from our house, under a big old oak tree there, just this side of Ray Mendes, uh Cold Company. And uh, there was always a bunch of uh, bums out there, I guess. In later years, the wine homes took it over. But in those days, they were just they were real genuine bums, hobos. They were just trying to, to find work and make a living, some pretty good people. And my mother would go uh, take this uh, plate of food over there to those folks. And uh, and sometimes we'd spend two or three big plates of food over there. They would send us kids, we'd put a little water on the beans and make it go a little bit further. And you know, that's what we did back in those days. They wouldn't hardly a day went by that we, my mother didn't send some food over to them hobos over in the jungle. But they were a good time. We weren't afraid of those people. They were just people trying to find work and so forth. Today, you wouldn't hardly do that today. Think about that. Hallelujah. Uh, they're running up and down the highways, the interstate highways. Uh, they they all got a disability of some kind. Whether it's, whether it's right or not, they manage to get some kind of a disability. And they run all up and down the interstates and they cause trouble. And, they, and, they, and you've got to be afraid to even stop them. I'm, I'm half afraid to stop in a rest area anymore. I, I, I look all around and see who's there. Especially if it's real late at night. If, if it don't look too good, I, I move on to the next one. I don't... Uh, I don't lay around, <laughs> and, and that's sad that it's that way, but that is the way that it is. But back in those days, it wasn't that way. Amen. Uh, we didn't have air conditioning in our home. We didn't know what air conditioning was. Air conditioning was. Well, so we all slept out in the yard. We slept out in the yard or on the porch, or, right, or we'd open the door right in front of the street door. If there's a little bit of a breeze blowing, we'd lay down right in front of, of the door. But a lot of times, I've, many, many times, I come home uh, from a show or something and, and see uh, blankets out in the yard and people sleeping in the yard. Do you think you see that today? No. No, we're, we're in perilous times. We're in the last days. And I look back at those times and they were, they were good times. And, and I would say everything was perfect. We, like I said, we had seven kids and sometimes we didn't have everything we needed. But nevertheless, as uh, Dolly Parton said, we was poor, but we didn't even know we was poor. We didn't know we was poor. We, we had... Somehow, somehow, Mom always managed to get to get us some food. And you know, she uh, singing the song that in, in the summertime we didn't have shoes to wear, but in the winter time we all got a brand new pair from a mail out of order catalog, money made from selling a hog. Daddy always managed to get the money somewhere, and I lived out those times. I remember those times very well when we go all summer. And sometimes we'd get on some uh, tar-covered uh, streets and, and it would just be black. You couldn't get it all. You, you'd be wearing them all summer like that. But in the, in the winter time when, when school started, we all got a new pair. Right? <laughs> 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 a lot of times they wanted to make them last, yeah. And we had a couple of uh, sets of clothes, you know. And uh, we'd have to change clothes every day when we'd come home. We had to change, put our play clothes on. Put, it, was our, it was our good clothes. And we had to hang them up and then we put our play clothes on. And we had just a couple of sets of those. If you're lucky, you might have three of them. Most of us had two. And sometime during the middle of the week, we'd wash those two and then we'd go on through the week with it. You know, some of you all did the same thing. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. And really, but there was something else that we had. Well, we did that too. I remember one time we uh, we had a four-acre garden. We we uh, we hoed it, potatoes and uh, and everything we needed. We put it up in the winter time, and that's what we, uh, that's how we got by. Praise the Lord. Yeah, there was 
There's five of us boys. We was all out there with holes, buddy. We was working that field, let me tell you. And we all got out there. Mom and Dad, all of us, we got out there. And we dug in turnips. And, we, and, we, and back in those days, people eat a lot of turnips. They don't even hardly eat turnips anymore. But we eat turnips. And we dug potatoes. Amen. And we worked in that field. And, and then Mom put up the tomatoes. And we go up in, uh, in the woods and, and, and get wild uh, raspberries or blackberries. Come home with a wash tub full. Can about a hundred cans and make some jelly and make and then what a little she had left with she make some blackberry dumplings. Oh, that was good. But, uh, it was good times. There was there was hard times but there was good times. I really wonder what some of the kids are going to do uh, when we don't have any food. We don't have any and the grocery stores are closed or they're or they're rationing food. You kind of wonder what in the world they're going to do. I guarantee you what some of us will do, we'll, we'll be in, we'll go picking in berries, we'll be, we'll be digging in taters, and we'll do what we have to do, but we know how to do it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, we did for a long time. Yes, I know all about that live soap. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. And they, and, but, you know, uh, time softens the... And we, and we remember the good parts. We don't remember all the bad parts. And there was, was some bad parts too. There always is, and always has been, and always will be. But there was a lot of good there. One thing that was good, we'd sit around the night and sing gospel songs. My sister played the piano. She played the piano. We'd sing gospel songs. And uh, we might listen to the radio. We listened to Love and Abner, you know, and uh, some of those. Uh, Amos and Andy, oh yeah, I like Amos and Andy too. And Jack Benny and Phil Harris. And, uh, you listen to all those two, didn't you? Uh, and I kind of miss it, you know. Uh, some people don't want to like to, to lay down. We used to get a couple of chairs uh, in front of the radio and I'd lay down there and make me a little uh, pallet there, you know, and, and listen to that, that show. And you have to imagine the scene in your mind. All they have was some sound effects, you know, but, but even got the way it was pretty daggone good. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of man? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, a straight arrow. Kaniwa! Fury! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know those things. <laughs> well, uh, when, uh, when the TV began to come out in the 50s, we go up and front, stand in front of Maxwell's Hardware Store and watch the basketball tournaments. And we stood out there in the snow and watch the basketball tournaments being played. <laughs> but you know, you do what you got to do when you're poor. And most of us got three or four of them out the house now. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, we, we had uh, dinner together every night, supper we were home. And uh, we, after we'd eat, we'd push the chairs back and we'd all talk and we'd tell about our day and we'd tell and we had conversation in the family. And dead women us get out there without it, I guarantee you. But it's a great time as I look back on it. It's precious times. Yeah. Precious, precious times. And they're, they're all gone. If we feel the glow of it today, and it's not, and when we come in to the, to the house of God and we find the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we really understand that true love that comes only from the Father, and we enjoy that love together. And, and some of you people here, I, I really, truly, honestly, loves you more than I do some of my own natural people. Now, I know that don't sound right, but it's just true because they're, some of them are living a different life than we are. And they're going another direction. They're not interested in what I'm doing. And I, and I treat them cordial when they come around. I always try to make them welcome. But I'm in another world. They're, you know, I'm in another world from where they're at. I can't help that. I love them. I wish they'd come over and join me in this world. Praise the Lord. They, well, no, we pumped a no pump for a long, long time. Oh, yeah. We used to have to get out and prime it, you know, and all that business. Well, we had a pump. Uh, and one thing about in Martinsville, uh, in most of uh, Martin, especially the North End, you could drive a pipe in the ground and hit water about any time, any, any place in the North End. Not everybody had a way. Yeah. Well, in fact, a lot of them resented it when they had to go in city water because they liked their, their water just fine. But they, they kind of forced them on to it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, there's a, there's a few of them around. And, and, but anyway, all those memories come back to me when I begin to think about them. The children of God, we've got something waiting on us. Amen. That it's going to be, uh, we can't even imagine what it's going to be. In our greatest, wildest imagination, we can't imagine what it's going to be. But I'm going to tell you something. I know as a young child, I used to say this, and I hear some of the children say that. It's going to be boring in heaven. It will not be boring in heaven. But they think that, because it's all adults that they feel like, but that's not true. That's not the way it's going to be. There'll be every, every age and size represented there. And the Bible says we'll know as we're known. I don't know exactly how that will be, but I believe what the Bible says about it, we will know as we're known. And I know that that uh, that Jesus ate fish in his glorified state. Uh, he said, uh, they give me some fish, eat some fish. So I think I'll probably eat some fish. I don't think we have to worry about the waste or anything. I don't think I think that'll just be taken care of. No. I, I don't believe we'll, we'll have any blood. I believe we'll be just mo motivated by the Spirit of God. I don't, we won't have any need of blood. See, the life is in the blood here. But in that place, the Spirit is going to be the life. Amen. And I really believe there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And I believe we will be the, uh, able to sin and be sin from heaven to earth. I'm going to go up and see how the boys in heaven are doing today. And they're going to be a new earth, you know. And there's going to be people populating this new earth at least for a, 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 a great amount of time. I don't, I'm not a great Bible scholar. I don't know all the, the mysteries about it. And it doesn't really matter to me. I, I'm, de I'm determined after 52 years it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth the trip. It's going to be worth everything. And it's going to be more than it's cracked up to be. And I have found this life to be uh, not, not all it's cracked up to be. And when you reach the top, you know, a lot of them look around and say, is this the top? But well, there just ain't much here. Millions, sometimes some of them do this. I'm serious. They reach the top and say, is this all there is? And I don't believe we'll do that over there. I believe we'll say, my God, I never imagined it. Oh, my uh, wildest imagination. When we go through the gates of that city and behold that city, I think we'll stand there for about a thousand years. Say, Hallelujah. God, look at this. Hallelujah. Look at this. My God, look at this. What God has provided for us. It'll take us a couple thousand years just to think about it. <laughs> but it's going to be worth it all, children of God. It's going to be good. The Bible says God Himself shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. Don't you want to go? Don't you want to go? Hallelujah. I mean, every good thing is waiting for us over there. We've got to make it. This whole world's going down. You can see it. Amen. It's going down. It's going down. It's, it's going, to, going to be destroyed someday. But there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. I believe that too. And I'll tell you this. Uh, the people of the world that don't know the Lord and don't serve Him and even some around the church that are not faithful to God and are not sold out to God like they ought to be, they got some things to worry about. But the, the, the blood-washed children of God, they ain't got nothing to worry about. He's going to take care of you. He always has and He always will. Praise the Lord. And when it gets upon this earth to where we can't stand to live here, and the Bible said the days would wax worse and worse, and the love of many would wax cold, be murder in the streets and even blood up to the horse and bridle and somebody say praise the Lord it's going to be a bad time to be around here and as it was in the days of uh, for the children of Israel you know down in Egypt when they got where they, they cried out the Bible said by reason of their bondage they said Lord we can't stand this this is too much and no matter how much they did uh, the old Pharaoh he demanded more out of them and Lord we can't do this and the Lord sent a Savior down there, Moses, to deliver them out of there. And he brought them out with a mighty hand, hey. even with a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day, and led them to the Red Sea. And not only did he lead them to the Red Sea, but he caused the Red Sea to depart. Amen. And, 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 and they went over on dry land. The Bible said the wind blew all night. It blew all night. Amen. It dried that ground. And they went over on dry ground. Hallelujah. Think of, now think about the millions of people that went across there on dry land. And think about how long it took. And they were being pursued. And about the time that they stepped, the last one stepped foot on the bank. And the Egyptians, uh, those uh, uh, Egyptians were out in the, in the, in the water. The Lord could cause that water to come and drown them all. Praise the Lord. He's going to defeat every enemy that we've ever had. Hey, but we'd be able to live in peace with the Prince of Peace. Everything's going to be good over there. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Come and go with me to my Father's house. I used to sing that song all the time. Jesus will be there in my Father's house. Hey, glory to God. We're going to praise forevermore in my Father's house where there's peace, Hallelujah. peace, peace, the son said. Hallelujah. Come and go with me to my Father's house Hallelujah. where there's peace, peace, peace. He told us he cried peace and safety this day, but all there is is warfare and struggle and strife. If we're headed for summer, we're going to be peace. Thank you, Jesus. I know I got a longing in my heart for it. Something way beyond. There's an old song called The Hills of Home. Dottie Rambo wrote that song and had a record of it one time. The hills of home are calling me. I see loved ones standing over yonder where hearts are light and spirits free and an ocean day I'll go over when the angels set my spirit free and I'll take my flight like a mighty eagle for the hills of home keep calling me Whew. this house of flesh is a here's brother this house of flesh <laughs> bars of bone hold oh my soul oh hallelujah I, anyway, I can't remember all of it now I used to sing it a great song, but I, but I feel that call upon my soul from over yonder. It said, "Don't, no, don't, don't get discouraged. Amen. Don't look down. Amen. Look, look into the Father. Keep your eyes upon Him. Love one another. Help your brothers and sisters along the way. Be there for one another. Hallelujah! Can you say Amen? Support one another. Lift each other up. Oh, children, God, I can't do this without you, and you can't do it without me. But together, we can make this thing." <coughs> Let me read just a little bit, and I'll let you go. He said, A second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. And that's how I got talking about remembrance. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles in the, uh, of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue on as they were from the beginning of the creation. Why, they said, you silly thing, they've been talking about the Lord coming for years and years and years. Well, that's just well, that much closer to that coming. I believe He's still coming. He said, for this they willingly are ignorant of. They're willingly ignorant. They've caused themselves even to deny God. He said that by the word of, the, of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, whereby the world of men was being overflowed with water, perished. We know all about that, and we know no preached about that, and it came to pass, didn't it? Just as sure as it came to pass, it's going to come to pass again. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. My mother and I used to sing a song, God put a rainbow in the cloud. God put a rainbow in the cloud. But it looked like the sun wouldn't shine anymore. God put a rainbow in the cloud. You see it every once in a while, don't you? You ever see a double rainbow? Oh, that's a really blessing, isn't it? And that, and that is a letter from Jesus. Every time we see that, that rainbow, it's a sign that he's not going to destroy this earth by water anymore. But it's reserved for fire. This time it's going to be fire. Hallelujah. Oh, it's not going to be water this next time. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Some people trying to figure out how, you know, how old the earth is. I remember talking to an old uh, bishop one time that, uh, that had written the book about the age of the earth. It, uh, the name of the book was uh, Before the Foundation of the World. And, it, it, and uh, the, uh, the second part of it was a revelation of the ages. And he talked about how do some people say the world's a million years old. Some say it's millions of years old. Some say it's a billion years old. I'm sure they might. Some say it's a trillion years old. I don't know. But he said, I say they're guessing. What do you say? I say they don't know what they're talking about. So I just believe what God said about it. 
I believe he made the earth in seven days. And I don't know if I was seven thousand years. I really do not care. I, I know one day is when the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years later. I don't care how long it took. He wasn't tired when he got done. He didn't rest because he was tired. <coughs> he rested as an example for us to, to get some rest. Because we're not God. Can you say amen? Because <coughs> I know we have a Savior, a high priest, set in the heavens, daily, continually, day and night, making intercessions for your sins and my sins. He don't sleep and he don't slumber. He's not tired. Don't worry about a tired God. We don't have one. Amen. And think about how we get tired that he don't get tired. Now know that he's very patient. If you're slowful, He's, he's waiting on you. <clears throat> he's waiting on you to come and make your peace call in election sure with God. He's ready. He, he'll wait a long time. But there is an appointed time. And when that time comes, it's over. I believe the last song is going to be sung. The last sermon is going to be preached. And the Lord's going to come. At an hour, at a time when we thank God. I heard a preacher say one time, I know the exact hour is coming. <clears throat> The hour when you thank God. He's coming. I kind of looked at it funny when he said that. I was just a young preacher. I know the very hour he's coming. I, said, I worry about that. My, you know, my, when, I, when I see what they're going to predict, December the 21st, the Lord's going to come. Remember you know, the hell bop guys at the, that they finally end up committing suicide because they're going to be taken out with the hell bop coming? It's going to happen on the 18th, I think they said the first time. And then it was a, they moved it up the 21st. They were <coughs> no wrong in our calculations. When they found that they was all dead, they were still right here on the earth. They didn't go nowhere. See, men have always wanted to be God. Man wants to be God. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to be very close to it. We're going to be like God. He's going to, amen, we're going to be like God. He's going to, we're going to be elevated to the status of God if we're faithful with we prove that true. <coughs> amen. Can you say amen? amen. So he said, that The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is willing, uh, is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know what God wants? He wants you to come to repentance. He wants you to be saved. He don't want you to be lost. He didn't intend, he did not build hell for the, for the people of God. No, it was for Satan, his, his angels. Amen. But if you want to go there, you sure can go. You can find your way if you want to go. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now, I don't know exactly what order all that's in, but all that's, because sometimes when it talks about the prophecy, it talks about the past, it talks about the present, and it talks about the future, and it's kind of hard to straighten you know, to straighten us right on and try to. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for, hasten unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Gonna be a new heaven, a new earth. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is, is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures under their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also be led away with the error of wickedness, fall from your own steadfastness. I, I know you can fall. I know you can fall. I know we preach a real strong grace message here. And that grace message is always available. It's always there. As long as you're faithful to, uh, to ask God to forgive your sins, amen, He will forgive your sins. If, you, if you'll if you be faithful enough to re uh, repent of your sins, 
He is faithful to forgive your sins. And we do, we die daily. We keep that slate clean before the Lord daily. Amen. But if you turn your back on the Lord and from everything that uh, that He has for you, knowing what you know, I don't give much hope for you. I got to be honest with you. Praise the Lord. That's right. Yeah, he said it's your own destruction. <laughs> Therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, before you, uh, beware lest you also be led away with the air of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord. Brother Mark, we got to grow in grace. Brother Mark was talking about all the you don't understand. I said, yeah, but just think about what you do understand that you didn't understand. Well, that's true. I do understand a lot. You can always look back and say, well, I really have come up pretty good long ways. The devil wants you to always believe you don't know nothing. Amen. But if, you, if you're faithful and you call on to know the Lord, you'll grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. He'll reveal himself to you. Amen. I mean to the point when men try to tell you things about God, say, don't try to tell me that about God. I know God. That's, God's not like that. Don't you try to say that about my Savior. I know Him. Man, Him's on a, on a talking basis. We, we're one on one. Hallelujah. Amen. Growing grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. I just want to read that to you tonight. Uh, children, we are, we're, we're not at the mercy of the devil. We have power of the enemy. <laughs> The Bible says, resist the devil. And first of all, submit unto God. Submit unto God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, that really ain't much of an enemy. All you got to do is turn to God and he's going to run from you. That ain't really much of an enemy. <laughs> so, with the devil, what do you do? The devil, do you quit blaming on the devil. You rascal, you did it yourself. <laughs> Don't blame it on the devil. There was one time you could say that the devil's responsible for everything I am and, every, and it would be true. But that's not true today. You've been set free from the power of the devil. Amen. You can walk upon him. You can tread upon the serpents and tread upon the enemy. Hallelujah. I'm glad I know this. I love you all tonight. I'm not going to keep you in longer. God bless you. Appreciate your patience and your love. Amen. I, let's pray for all those tonight that, that ask for our prayers. Carry us with us. In our daily walk, Lord, remember and every name that was called. Take them before the Lord. It's important to you that we pray for one another. It's important we pray for our leaders, those that have the rule over us. Let's don't hate them. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. Then what they do, that's their business. But at least we'll know we did what God told us to do. And by all means, pray for one another. Get on the phone. Call somebody. Say, I just want to talk to you, lift you up a little bit today. Tell you some good thing about God. That's a good thing to do, isn't it? Huh? You know somebody sitting, shut in, give them a call. Say, I'm just thinking about you. We miss you. I'm going to tell you, God will bless your socks so if you do that. Amen. 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 <coughs> you're, trying to repeat, you're trying to repeat something I said? Is that what you're trying <laughs> Oh, Dad, uh, one another, one another. That's good. I like that. Amen. Because we're we're not on our own, children. Amen. We're in this thing together. He put us together. Amen. The Bible said He set us in the body as a pleased Him. You may not know, but you're right where you need to be. Somebody told us story the other night about the cross room, and I've used that a lot of times through the years in my Bible studies, and because it's true. I said, I he, he, he come to the Lord and said that, Lord, I said this cross is too heavy for me. You know, Jesus said, take up your cross. He didn't say, take up mine. He already took up his. He said, take up your cross and follow me. Lord, it's just, I believe it was you who said that, wasn't it, Junior? He said, this cross is too much for me. He said, well, I'll tell you what. He said, look around in the cross room and see what you can find. And so he laid his cross down. And he went around, he went around about near every cross in that room. Finally, he found one. He said, Lord, I believe this is the one that I think is just right for me. He said, well, that's good because that's the one you brought in. <laughs> I think most of us got just exactly the cross we need. Let's just ask God to help us to, to, to bear it and to love one another. Let's look at it again. Lord, we do love you tonight. We praise you for your blessings. We praise you for your word, for the hope that we have in the scripture and knowing you amen, through the word. Thank you for your spirit. We thank you for all these uh, amen, uh, uh, experiences that went forth in this building tonight through the spirit, Lord. 
the laying on of hands. Hallelujah. And all the move of the Spirit and all the gifts of the Spirit. We thank you for all of it, Lord. We love it all. We praise you for it. And we thank you for it. Keep us safe on the highways and the homes and the neighborhoods, on the job and in the schools. Keep your hand upon us to be able to come back once again to be together. And we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Love you. Appreciate you.